Hello, welcome to my pattern review of Simplicity 3949. It is a very cute apron that comes in sizes small, medium, and large for both adults and children. So you could make a matching apron for you or your child or your grandchild. And I decided to do view B, of course, with the heart-shaped bib and the heart-shaped pockets because I want to use this cute, I love Lucy fabric that has heart shapes in it. And I decided to use three different prints. That they're all coordinating and I think it looks really great. So go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces according to the directions right here. All right, so the first step in this apron is to do the rickrack on the pockets. Now rickrack is totally optional, but this directions will tell you to start your rickrack uh, at the very top of the heart shape. Now the first time I did it, I did not like it, how it turned out. So I chose not to do it that way. I put started my rickrack at the very bottom of the heart and went around. So just keep in mind, whatever is on the inside of the stitching line of the rickrack is going to be flipped to the outside and that's what's going to show after you flip it out. And I will show you when I complete that. Now you'll see here that I used a seam gauge to apply the rickrack a half an inch uh, inside the seam and that's where I'm going to do my stitching, right on the very center of the rickrack, I'm just going to use a straight stitch uh, and a half inch seam allowance. Okay, here you see me stitching on the rickrack and I'm going really slow and whenever I need to turn, just pivot a little bit just so I can stay right in the center of the rickrack. Now I am just doing a basting stitch here and I used quite a bit of pins just to make sure that that rickrack stayed right where I wanted it, right at half an inch from the edge. So here is a close-up view of how I pinned on the rickrack at the very top uh, corner of the heart. All right, little quick tip. I keep my magnetic pincushion in the back of my machine. So as I'm sewing and I'm pulling off my pins, I just slide it across and they get caught by the magnet. Okay, here you see uh, the pocket that has the basted rickrack on it and I put it together with the lining fabric. I'm lining my pockets in the little red micro dot. I thought that would be really fun with this print. And I pinned them together and I'm going to be stitching them uh, at uh, right inside that that's basting stitch. So it's just going to be like a little bit over half an inch seam allowance. All right, now here's the view after I clipped the corners and trimmed the seams. Now I did not trim or clip into the, the rickrack because I was afraid that it would ravel or that I would clip too far. So, and I left the opening for turning. Here's a view of that. Now I turned it and I pressed it really nice and you can see how nice and sharp that looks. Here's another view after pressing. This is before I top stitched it. And I do plan on top stitching this uh, 2 eighths of an inch from the edge of the fabric. Just so it'll lay nicely. And here I am doing the same thing to the bib part. Just adding that rickrack all the way around using my seam gauge to make sure that it's right on the half inch line. All right, before I do my top stitching on the pockets, I'm going to pin closed the opening and I'm going to make sure that it's pinned right at two eighths of an inch, right at the top of that pin. That's where I'm going to be stitching. That helps uh, it to stay closed. And then I don't have to hand stitch, slip stitch it because it's already closed up by the top stitching. Okay, now I'm just going really slow around the bottom corner of the heart just to make the top stitching look real nice. All 
All right, so if you press it really nice, you don't need to pin as you're doing this top stitching, except for I just pinned that little opening closed. That way I know exactly where it is and I'm gonna be extra careful uh, in that section to make sure that it just, it closes up nicely on the back part of it. And I like to just stitch real close to those pins just to keep the fabric laying nice and flat in the back. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to meet up exactly with the starting point of the other line of stitching. So just go real slow. All right, you're gonna see that they match up really nice. And I'm gonna take a needle and take these little threads and just pull them to the back. All right, after I'm done with that, I'm gonna mark on the pocket using the pattern piece where the large dots are. That's where the stitching line is gonna be on the apron. All right, so here you see me top stitching the straps. I already put them together, uh, flipped them inside out or right side out and pressed. And I like to top stitch st all the straps that I make with aprons. That way when you wash them, uh, they don't come open and get real yucky and messy and then you have to uh, feel like you have to ape iron your apron after you wash it. So top stitching just makes straps really nice and professional looking and helps you to avoid doing a lot of ironing. So sometimes when you're stitching really close to the edge or a corner, um, it can be a little difficult. The fabric can get stuck in your throat plate. Uh, just go slow. Sometimes you need to just like hand crank the machine and to get it going, just be patient with it. Here you see my top stitching. I used a white thread so it would stand out and look nice. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the neck straps and the ends of the neck straps on this pattern are at an angle. So I'm gonna make sure that when I put them in, uh, they're kind of going in opposite direction. And I'm gonna be measuring just about one inch up from the raw edge for uh, inserting the strap into the bib. Now this bib, actually the directions tell you to have this step already done before putting the bib together, but I find that I don't like the placement of the straps. So I do it afterwards so that I can angle them in towards the neckline, as you can see here. I just, I'm really picky about the way my straps lay. I want it to, uh, we angled toward the neck so it's more comfortable to wear. All right, now for the waistband, I'm going to be adding some fusible interfacing into mine, and I'm just going to be doing half of the width. So I fold it in half, and you'll see here, this, this is where I placed it. It's already fused inside there. So I just fold it in half, laid it on my fabric, and cut around it. You can do the whole width if you'd like. I'm just going to do half. This is Pelon 911 FF. Okay, here I'm going to be doing the skirt part of the apron. Now, I found that it is way too long, so I have shortened my pattern. As you can see, I have folded up the bottom probably about six inches, and I drew on the pattern piece a new um, line. That's a new stitch or hemline right there. And then um, I just folded it up and so you don't damage your pattern. You can make another one longer if you want. Um, but here I am just like trying to figure out where's my hemline, where's my stitching line going to be, and then I'm going to cut my skirt shorter. All right, so now you can see I've already done all the hemming on the skirt, and now I'm going to be doing the pocket placement 
So I neglected to mark it when I was first cutting it out. So I'm just going to go back and lay the pattern piece back onto the skirt, matching up uh, the top and just lay the pocket on and kind of fold it up and pin, mark a little underneath with the pin, kind of an old school way of doing it. All right, now here I am pinning on the pocket to the skirt part. And the large dots that are on the pattern, that is where you're going to start and stop your stitching line when you're attaching the pocket. Okay, then you need to gather the top of your skirt and I'm just doing it the old school way with uh, two lines of basting stitches and pulling it up to uh, match the waistband. Okay, now after I've gathered it up, I'm going to make sure that the skirt measures within the waistband, leaving about an inch on each uh, end of the waistband. All right, and here I'm just going to be pinning it on to, this is actually the front side of the waistband, and putting the apron inside those one inch marks. Then I'm going to spread out the gathers to make them all even. Okay, so at this point, it's a really good idea to already have the halfway point marked on the top of the skirt and the top of the waistband. So you could just fold the waistband in half and put a pin right there at the halfway point. And then you know you're going to have to match those two points up together when you are p pinning the skirt on. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on pinning the waistband to the skirt. Now my waistband has the fusible interfacing on the front side of it, so I knew exactly which side I was going to be pinning on to first. So you could just mark it with a pin or a little mark with a marking pin, P-E-N, not P-I-N. This is probably my least favorite task to do um, in something like this is the, the gathering. I don't have a gathering foot on my machine. I still do it the old way that I learned. And um, I don't know, someday I will have like a special attachment for my machine. It'll probably be a lot easier, but I'm showing you how to do it old school. Alrighty, as we're adjusting the gathers, I'm just going to pin it on to the waistband. And I like to use a lot of pins during the gathering process because it's so much fabric that I really want it to be, you know, laying correctly. So about an inch apart. Alright, and after I get all this pinned, then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance from the top of the waistband 
and I'm just going to go slow so I don't stitch over all those pins and just make sure all my gathers are straightened going downward as I'm stitching it. It's kind of a slow process. Um, I have seen online some people uh, they iron the gathers down before they do this. I think that's a good idea. I might try that next time. All right, now I had just a little bit of extra fabric, so I just pulled up the gathering thread and finished it off. Okay, now I'm just going to check my waistband and make sure there is no thread sticking out and it looks pretty good. And the next step is to be attaching the waist ties to the ends. Okay, so another step before you put the waist ties on is pressing the waistband away from the skirt in the front. So you're going to be pressing down those gathers to make it nice and crisp. And then on the other side, press the gathers down towards the inside of the waistband. Okay, and now you can see I have the strap pinned to the front side of the waistband facing the middle of the skirt and I'm going to be stitching right there at 5 eighths of an inch um, being very careful not to catch the skirt into it. I'm just going to stitch right across. Now I am a little particular about which direction the straps are. The Where the seam is of the strap is the bottom and where the fold is is the top of the strap for me. Okay, now you can see how I did that. I just stitched just on the strap and I did not catch the skirt. And then now we're going to take the top of the waistband and fold it over and match those corners. And we're going to be stitching right there at 5 eighths of an inch, being very careful not to catch the skirt into it. Okay, here I am going to be stitching it. I have it pinned and the skirt is kind of pulled away to the left so that I won't get caught inside. Okay, now make sure that you back stitch right here a few times to give it a little more strength on the straps. And here's what it looks like afterwards. And I'm going to be clipping the corner and trimming that seam off. Just be really careful not to cut your seams. That would be a little disastrous. Now we're going to just turn it to the right side. And look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, now to finish off the waistband, I'm just going to uh, turn this edge under about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and give it a good press. Okay, now you see it's all nice and pressed, and I've already got it pinned, but I'm going to show you that I'm going to measure it, and it is about 3 eighths of an inch turned under, and this, the back of the waistband is actually wider than the front of the waistband, and I'll show you that. Now the directions for this pattern is going to tell you to do a slip stitch by hand on the back side, but I'm going to show you how to do like a stitch in the ditch method with your machine. Uh, right here where the pin goes in is where my stitching is going to be and where it comes out at the back. That's where it's going to be on the back side. So it's kind of like when you're doing bias tape um, and stitching in the ditch combined, I guess. I'm not really sure. But um, that is where I'm going to be stitching, right there. So it's going to be practically invisible on the front. But it's going to catch the very end, very e edge of it on the back. All right, now here's the front view of how I have it pinned, just so you can see how I did that. The very top of the pin goes in to where the stitching line is going to be. And on the back side, it comes out with 2 eighths of an inch um, seam allowance or, you know, there's going to be a two-eighths of an inch edge on the back, if that makes sense. All right, here we go. I'm 
stitching the waist back of the waistband on through the front side and I'm just catching that back piece in and I'm stitching right like in the ditch so it's going to be invisible. I love this method. It's so much faster than hand stitching the back of your waistband on. It saves me so much time. All right, here you go. That's what it looks like when you do it that way. And just going to check my work and make sure it's all caught in there nicely. And I don't see any stitching in the front. Ah, look at that. It's perfect. Okay, I'm just going to show you. Um, I had to kind of fold it in a little bit at that inside corner just to kind of hide it. So you can't really tell because it's on the back anyways. All right, so the instructions for this apron is just to stitch the bib on, but I have decided I'm gonna put buttons and buttonholes to attach it. I'm gonna put the buttonholes on the bib and I'm gonna stitch buttons onto the apron front of the uh, waistband. So I just need to determine the placement and I want to make it even. So I'm going to fold my apron in half on the waistband and I'm going to put a mark with a pin right at the center fold. Okay, now I'm going to determine halfway um, on the bib. I'm just going to fold that in half, put a little crease, I'm going to mark that with a pin also. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. <laughs> um, I'm going to put my buttonholes right along the black line of the print on this. I think that's a good placement and I'm just going to measure like halfway between the center front and the edge and then that's going to be the center of my buttonhole. Do that on both sides. I'll just mark it with a pin. Okay, so now I have my placement points for my buttonholes on the bib and now I'm going to measure uh, the correct placement for the buttons to be stitched on. I'm going to Put the buttons right there on the center of my waistband. All right, so that's what it's going to look like with little buttons there. I think that's going to be really cute. And then that's how the bib is going to attach. So you can have half apron or a whole apron. And here is how it looks after I did machine stitching of the buttonholes. And I'm not going to show it here, but I do go back and I do some hand stitching over them. All right, here's my finished apron. And I really like how it turned out. The pockets have the cute little print on the inside. And I made the bib detachable. So this apron is versatile. You can have a half apron or a whole apron. And I just think it looks really cute. And it's nice and colorful. Very happy with it.